That's right, we are amping up the volume here on Press Row. We're back after a week off. Hope you didn't miss us too much. And Zach Bauer is filling in for Aaron Matthews, who is on duty today, getting ready for LCC's game. Joined by Todd Walker and Mark Kuntz, as always, I'm Matt Finkel. Got to start with regional volleyball, guys. It begins tonight, and we got, I believe it's four area teams with a chance to make it to state. Oh, it's more than four. Is it four? Oh, yeah, you've got St. Mary's is still alive. You've got Minster still alive. You've got... Uh, Jackson Center, Fort you got Lormie. Fort Lormie, you've got Versailles, you've got Coldwater, that's six. All right, so I, Macomb, Macomb how seven. did you forget about Macomb? Almost half I missed out on. So <laughs> with those seven in mind, who's got the best chance to get to Dayton? Well, obviously, I mean, Macomb is the favorite at this point, number one team in the state the entire year in Division Four. They haven't lost a game all season long. They went to Dayton a year ago. But I think Minster might be the team that could surprise some folks. I know a lot of people are thinking that Minster – they're not quite as good as St. Henry. There's a little bit of an upset to get past New Knoxville and St. Henry for the Wildcats to get to the regional. But this is a Minster team that's on a roll right now, and you can't take away momentum in the postseason. So perhaps Minster could be that surprise team to make it to Dayton. Yeah, I don't know how you can pick against the number one team if you want to say who's the favorite. Uh, when you look at their regional, uh, they've got to be the favorite to come out of there. But you're right, that, that southern regional, you're talking about Minster, they're playing Fort Loramie. Uh, two teams that uh, are used to winning, and uh, Jackson Center is looming. But you know, don't forget about St. Mary's. You talk about getting there, getting on a roll. You've got to give them a chance as well. But I'd have to go with McComb and see if they can get back there. They're the favorites, no question about it. Uh, the, the number one runaway favorite in Division Four all year. So I'll go with them. Top ranked and undefeated. Mentioned Coldwater. They. Uh had a nice district championship in Kaleida, defeating Liberty Benton in four sets. And they've been on a good roll. Young team that Andy and I watched play at the Coldwater Spike Off. And Mike Etzler was saying that they're a young group. And now all of a sudden they're playing in a regional semifinal and, and playing some of their best volleyball. So they could be a team that we could see in Dayton as well. So no one's going to mention the defending Division Three champions for sales. Well, they're still in it as well. <laughs> what about Versailles? I want to bring up Versailles. Oh, good, Zach. Yeah. 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 Not a boy. <laughs> Well, the Mac is well represented, as mm -hmm. we, we know that. Yeah, pick a sport the Mac's well represented. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a, that's a common occurrence. Anyway, speaking of the Mac, Week 10 high school football, and the Mac, Marion Local, is uh, in the driver's seat for the Mac title. And, but the question I want to ask you is, what, what are we still playing for here on Week 10? Now, you know, some teams have a chance to get into the playoffs. Others are playing for pride. What, what are we playing for Week 10? Uh, the NWC is really the only conference that still has got mm. a, a champion still to be determined. Spencerville takes on Jefferson. Winner of that game is your outright champion. Outside of that, it's, it's kind of an anticlimactic week 10. It's stay healthy, don't get anybody hurt going into the postseason. And that's, I think, a challenge for a lot of uh, week 10 football games is just staying disciplined and playing well in week 10 so that if you've got uh, a playoff game coming up that you're not losing momentum, um, definitely not looking to get any injuries either. So it's kind of a balancing act there, I think, um, as far as what you're looking for in Week 10. Yeah, I think it really depends on your situation. Uh, if you maybe do have a few guys dinged up and your game doesn't mean much, you can rest those guys. If you lost last week, like Lima Senior, mm -hmm. even though this week doesn't really mean a whole lot, you're probably going to have a home game anyway. You're not going to win the league unless there's a huge upset for, your, uh, uh, for Toledo Central Catholic. But you got to get back on the win track here, get some more momentum, some confidence. So really, I think it just depends on your situation. But you're right, Mark, the Jefferson-Spencerville game is the only one left that really is going to decide the conference championship. And a lot of the teams have already locked in their playoff position and or a home game. So it is maybe the most anticlimactic week 10 we've had in a while. You do also have the Valley Division of the BVC yet to be decided with Van Buren hosting Pandora Gilboa. If, right. if PG gets that win, there'll be a shared title of Van Buren wins. They'll take that outright. As and also uh, Macomb, Liberty Benton, there's, in the division, there's only one game difference. So. Right. So if Macomb could beat Liberty Benton, then you'd have Arlington, Macomb, and LB share the title. Right. Three-way share. But that Van Buren game might be more important just for their playoff chances yeah. at this point. They Van need, Buren has to get that win. They need a win. To get in. Yeah. And that would be their first ever playoff appearance as a program. 
So with that in mind, who has the most to lose going into week 10? It seems like if you don't have too much to play for, maybe you could slip a little. Who has the most to lose? Jefferson, I think, might have the most to lose. Yeah. If they lose to Spence for A, you lose to your biggest rival this season. That's right. B, you lose out on the conference championship. And C, your slim playoff hopes are completely disappear with that mm -hmm. loss to, Je to Spencerville. So Big game for Jefferson them. might have the most to lose this week, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I would say along that similar line as Van Buren because mm -hmm. uh, they're looking for that divisional title. And they also, even if they win, they're not guaranteed to get in. They still need a little bit of help. Probably will get in, though, if they win. So they could lose out on both. And it's really uh, important, I guess, for that first ever, for their school, their first playoff berth ever. So they've got a lot to lose as well. Definitely the two schools that I was considering. But Jefferson, interesting note, the fact that the game is on a Saturday this year, yeah. it's almost more pressure put on that game. Yes, it's a rivalry. Yes, it means playoff points. For Spencerville, it means a home uh, game clinched. And so there's just a lot of pressure. I think there'll be a lot of uh, maybe casual fans watching Saturday night. Should be a fun one. Four recovery for sales is another one where the loser might be in big trouble in terms of playoff points, in terms of positioning. It's certainly for recovery. They don't want to lose another game. Yeah, they want to try to avoid the eighth seed in that region because that eighth seed will take on Marion Local. Yeah. And for recovery, can still earn a home game, I believe, right? With yeah, a victory? Yeah, yeah, with a victory. Yeah. And on the flip side of the Jefferson coin, I think Spencerville could have a lot to lose, too. I think they... If with a loss, they still have a great chance to get into the playoffs. But like you said, losing to your rival and losing the league title, the way they started this season, they were so dominant that that could be kind of a way to limp into the playoffs. I, th I think they could have a lot to lose as well. It could be interesting to see. Yeah, I think that's exactly right with Spencerville. I, I, that loss that they suffered to Crestview, I think, might have set them back a little bit in their confidence area. When mm -hmm. I was talking about Lima Senior earlier, same kind of situation for Spencerville, although the conference title and beating Jefferson is enough, trust me, but then they need to get back on the win track and, and lock down a home game. I think a home game would be great for Spencerville. They've right. never hosted a First playoff time. game, yep. so that would be another feather in their cap. An outright NWC title, a 9-1 and one season, and uh, just to uh, beat a good team heading into the playoffs I think would be a, a very big deal for Spencerville. A lot of hype with this game. You can watch it on WOSN Saturday at 11 p.m., one of our five rebroadcast games that we've got for you in week 10, so be sure to look out for that. Moving our attention now to college football, the first playoff, what do we call them, seedings, I guess? College hmm. Football Playoff Committee. Committee announced their uh, rankings, and did they get it right? We know the two undefeateds are in there, and they included two other SEC teams that would play in the playoffs if they started this week. I, I would suppose the one thing you have to keep in mind is there's a lot of football to be That's played right. yet. Even with these first rankings out, it's going to be interesting to see the second week if there's a lot of movement. Because usually in your polls, your AP poll, your coaches poll, there's not a lot of movement in the polls unless somebody loses. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how this committee reacts to what actually happens on the field from week to week. And, and we'll see. I mean, right now, I, you can't really argue too much. Perhaps Notre Dame should be up a little bit higher, but there's still a lot of football to be played. A lot of that's going to sort itself out. But it's something to, to keep an eye on is exactly how the machine is going to work on this committee. Seems to me thus far that this committee has lived up to its statements of being more objective than the quote-unquote polling system we're used to with AP or the coaches poll. And you're right, I'll be interested to see if there's movement among teams that all win. In other words, from week to week, how much is this committee changing its thought on who the top four is or who the next four are? Mm -hmm. You know, right now, if you're not in the top four, it's really not a big deal because we got a long way to go. But if you start dropping in relation to other people you're equal with, then you might have a problem in the long run. And I think this committee is of a mind to do things differently and do things correctly so that it doesn't get bogged down with the criticisms of the way we used to do it with, with polls or with the convoluted formula of the BCS. Hmm. Well, and I think that I'm, I'm with you, Mark, that uh, I have no major complaints with the four that they've put in there. But if you look at, at what Mark said, a lot of football left to be played. Three out of the four teams actually have to play each other yet in the season. So there's going to be a lot of mix up right then, there between Mississippi State and Ole Miss playing each other. Auburn still has Georgia and Ole Miss and Alabama, not to mention them. So a lot of football yet to be played. But no major complaints for me um, from the top four. 
I'm excited about it. I think it's a, it's going to be a good thing going forward. Let me just ask you one question. Knowing that the there's only two undefeateds now and seeing how the season played out, does the Ohio State loss to Virginia Tech sting even more, knowing that they, they would be in that four right now had they just done what they were supposed to do and won their home opener? I don't guarantee they'd be in that Right, four exactly. You don't think so? Virginia Tech. Because I- even if they had beaten Virginia Tech, they still don't have what would be considered a and strong key the points that they, yeah. No. Maybe that'll come against Michigan I think State. The bigger question is, what did we see that day? Did we see Ohio State just lay a complete egg with a guy making his second start at quarterback ever? Or did we see Virginia Tech play the game of their collective lives? Or are they both not any good? I don't know. (laughs) What are we talking about? Well, and and certainly the Ohio State game at Penn State a couple days ago raises more questions about Ohio State, whether Mm -hmm. or not that Virginia Tech game was a fluke, or are Kent State, Rutgers, Maryland that bad? Because those teams are really not very good. So, and, you know, we're going to learn more about Ohio State in the weeks coming up. A lot of football to be played. You know, Ohio State 16th in that first poll, which I believe is the lowest-ranked one-loss team. But there aren't any two-loss teams ahead of them. So, again, in in that sense, that's another way how this college football playoff committee, I think, is doing things right, at least so far. And Michigan State sitting at number nine, is it right now in that poll? Eight. 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 So, interesting. Well, Ohio State and Michigan State in in a couple weeks. All right, to basketball. NBA season started last night on Tuesday night. Thank goodness. So the Cavs, everyone's excited. We got the Cavs, we got LeBron. They're opening up against my Knicks on Thursday. Are they the best team in the East? Who claims the Knicks? <laughs> this guy. That's this how pathetic right I here. it is. This yeah. right here. 1970-something was our last uh, title? 74. 73. 73. I think yeah. I was going to say 73. Whatever. You weren't even around. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't even a hey, thought. He watched when the garden was eaten. I'm sure. I did, yeah. I got, I got that. You know, I'm no NBA expert, of course, but, uh, you know, you got LeBron, so because you know his team, slapping together a bunch of superstar players with know. a first-year head coach always works. It doesn't <laughs> always work. That's my point. But in Miami, they did get to the finals the first year of that amalgamation, and they could have won that final series. They didn't. But the the point is, the Cavs have some solid players. The East is not exactly loaded. You know, Derrick Rose is supposedly going to elevate Chicago, but who knows if he can play more than five games without getting hurt. Uh, the East is theirs to win, certainly. My question is just, it comes down to the coach. Hmm. First-year head coach, doesn't have a whole lot of NFL or NBA experience. He's got a great a lot of wealth of basketball experience, but I, I just think there's a lot of new parts that are going to mesh together. This could be a team that maybe comes together in February, March, April and goes on a run. I, I, I would just be cautious about what the Cavs will do the first couple months of the season. Wisdom and caution for sure, but I'm going to flat out say I'm excited for the Cavs because I think that they're a team that can mesh together very quickly. They've got the basketball parts to work well together. And LeBron, um, we've all seen how much weight he's lost, how much quicker he's looked in the preseason. Um, He doesn't have to play those traditional post positions. He's going to be able to, but there's a variety of options for him. So Chicago, yes, is going to be the other um, contender in the East. Don't forget about New York. (laughs) And the Knicks. We'll be lucky to to get 20, 25 wins maybe. (laughs) A lot of questions still for Chicago. Just remember, Darko Milicic has more NBA championship rings than Carmelo Anthony. Yeah. I don't need uh, any rip, more ripping on my uh, Carmelo Anthony. We can, that's, we can end press row just like that. Look out for the Cavs on Thursday night. It'll be a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to see how they gel with Kevin Love and, and Kyrie and everybody. That's going to do it for this edition of Press Row. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy your Week 10 football games and the rest of your playoffs on the weekend. We'll see you next time.